Hello and welcome to Selenium CSS Selector tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the CSS Selector uh, substring. So, uh, substring matches basically how you can utilize substring matches to form the CSS Selector. So, substring matches are really, really helpful for identifying the dynamic web elements on any web page and they help in identifying any of the uh, web element which has the uh, you know dynamic component either in the beginning or in the uh, in in the, in the end and because with the substring you can do partial string matches and that is why even though at the beginning or end of any string if it is dynamic value then you can still identify the web element with whatever static part of that attribute value is static so uh, the three very important special characters in a css substring are the exponent sign so which signifies the prefix of the text uh, the dollar sign which signifies the suffix of the text and the star or multiplication sign which signifies the substring of the text so very important symbols and uh, you can identify using the prefix suffix or substring of the text so now let's go ahead and see how you can utilize the substring selector uh, to identify the web element uniquely or the dynamic web element so you know, here are some of the examples to match the prefix of the text so for example you have the uh, the tag name so the syntax is very similar as uh, we have understood in the first tutorial itself so you have the tag name the square brackets and say for example you want to select the attribute name right and which starts with something there is a prefix of so prefixes um, or uh, the substring is fixed for the initial couple of uh, characters so for example country underscore c is fixed and then there is dynamic value which is which changes in every refresh when the page refreshes so in that sort of scenario you can't rely on the name attribute value of the name attribute fully if you want to say country underscore c one two three four and this one two three four next time becomes four five six seven once the page refreshes then in that case your css selector is going to fail but if you just use the prefix which is the exponent sign and then specify whatever the static component of that particular uh, web element attribute value is then in that case even though one two three four changes to a b c d or four five six seven it won't fail and same thing with the suffix so you have the input if there is something which is uh, dynamic at the front of the string but the latter part is static then you can specify the suffix or in the uh, the third scenario which is basically the substring so front and uh, the first part and the last part is dynamic and only the center part is unique then in that case you can use the star sign and select the static part of that particular string now let's go ahead and understand these css selectors uh, uh, for the substring okay using the substring so I'll go to the developers.salesforce.com and let me just inspect any of the web element. Let's take postal code and this is in Chrome browser. So I can inspect by right clicking on any web element and click on inspect. So here I'll use uh, the name attribute to show you different uh, substring examples. So I'll do command F to open the search box or control F it is win if it is a Windows machine. Command F on Mac OS. And then simple syntax for the CSS selector, the tag name. So tag name is input. And then I'll use the name attribute and show you different options for selecting the substring. So say for example, in the application that you are testing this name attribute starts with the user and 
then starts with some you know like the dynamic number underscore one two three four five six seven eight right and the next time this page refreshes this name uh, changes to uh, the value changes to user underscore uh, some other dynamic number and this is very common in the web applications so if you are doing testing or automated testing for those sort of scenarios you will be required to dynamically to basically find out the that web element with the unique part of the attribute or the value of the attribute so user is um, static then in that case we'll use the substring matches so we'll start with input and then square brackets and we'll start with name right so the substring will be so basically if we go to the slide you will see that the prefix of the text right so name and then the exponent shine and the value okay so value if we just say name right or we'll go here postal code sorry and see what is the value here user okay so we'll start with user so now you can see as soon as I started typing in user it picked up all the web element which has uh, the value of the name starting as user okay so if I want to make sure that this particular postal code value is selected let me inspect this more and then we'll simply say the maybe just this part here whichever is unique so up to this part okay so user and then square bracket and then p okay let me remove the whole thing here and just paste in the rest of the value okay so we need to put it in quotes because there is a square bracket and that is why it won't be able to identify so there is a square bracket here and that's why we need to put this whole value in the quote okay so now you can see that it has identified this web element uniquely with the name starting with uh, user and a square bracket p okay similarly if we want to identify the web element using the suffix we'll use the dollar sign instead of the exponent sign we'll use the dollar sign so what we can do is we'll use the dollar sign so i'll change it to dollar and now because there is no web element on this page which has the suffix as user p so in this case it won't be able to identify anything so the suffix would be something like the ending with the string okay so which is underscore code let's see if it identifies this particular web element using the suffix yes so now you can see that underscore code is only available in this postal code and then this has identified this web element using this name attribute and the suffix for the value of the name attribute now i can change it to any other attribute as well right so if i want to identify with id and i can just say uh, the suffix as postal uh, code right so I'll, I'll just put the code there and sorry just need to remove this square bracket here and now you can see that it has selected similarly to find the substring right so you'll just use star so we'll just change this dollar sign to a star and then we can select the substring so let me go to that particular element location here and substring is something in between so I'll, i can say al underscore co and then just replace that substring right so now here you can see that this is not unique there are two web elements which have the same substring uh, al underscore co so let's see that what else can we add so we can also uh, use some other attributes for the same element right so we can simply say uh, square braces and then 
we can simply go to that web element and maybe just say uh, type or name or we can choose any other attribute so I can say name right and then we can use the prefix as well or we can use the whole name attribute whichever is uh, sort of unique right so we can say just name starts with in the single quotes and that's it right so now you can see this web element postal code text box has been selected uniquely so what this means is that you can use multiple attributes and also utilize the substring examples so you can use the combination of prefix for one attribute and the suffix for another attribute if both are dynamic to combine and come up with the CSS selector that will work fine for the dynamic web element. So for example, for one attribute, the prefix is fixed, but it is not unique on the page. You can utilize the suffix of another attribute value and combine these two um, attributes to form the CSS selector, which will make this particular web element unique uh, and you can identify it uniquely in your Selenium automation. So that's pretty much all about the CSS selector substring with examples. We have understood about the matching prefix of the text, suffix of the text and the substring of the text and the symbols that are being used to identify the substring. So hope you like the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.